what artists out there kind of like set the standard for you that you really do love, trust, and respect? My two older brothers who you couldn't pay a million dollars to complete a painting, Rudy McDowell and Lonnie McDowell, my two older brothers. They were my idols when I was coming up and they were my heroes along with my father. My father taught them to draw and they taught me to draw. And they were the artists that I respect because they did it so effortlessly. I didn't have the gift that they had. If you ask my older brother to draw you a line, he can draw you a line on a piece of paper and like it's growling at you. I had to learn and teach myself. Oh. And, it, and, it, and, and it was just so hard for me to, to, to grasp things in art. And they just did it like, oh, you want to draw a profile? And I would draw a profile like this. And my brother said, no, look in the mirror, your nose go in, your mouth go out, and you know, your nose comes out and goes in. He said, look at your face. And then he would do it real hard. <laughs> Because he was one of them roughnecks, you know, one of them project kids. My brothers would fight, and they were just rough with their kids. You know. and, and then when I started learning more about art in the fifth grade, when I was 10 years old, and then in the sixth grade, I started finding that there were artists, people called artists. That was the first time I did, didn't know before then that art, that there was a, a, a certain um, person or a certain um, craft called art. And then I started studying about the great artists like Michelangelo, who I'm very very impressed with his work. Michelangelo, Leonardo da Vinci, Raphael, um, Jagal, Van Gogh. I really like Vincent Van Gogh's work because of the technique. Um, Picasso, who was a great fine artist, went to Benin and set the 24 hours with one of the sculptures in his hand and he by himself created the abstract form of art. But he got it from Africa. <laughs> and um, I'm fascinated with his work. There are a lot of influences, even uh, Romer Bearden, who um, would do the what they call folk art or abstract folk art. I, I like his work. I like um, um, Jacob Lawrence. I like um, Charles White, who did all the artwork for Ebony Magazine back in the 60s. Uh, he did the black and white sketches, the renderings, Charles Biggers. All, all of these black and white arts, art to me does not have a color. I really don't look at it in forms of color. I think that artists paint who they are. They paint who the people were that influenced them and the people around them and the villages and stuff throughout time. The Pope, Pope John Paul I, if I'm not mistaken, hired Michelangelo to paint the Sistine Chapel. And that's when art came into the focus and everybody around the world started saying, um, this great genius, Michelangelo, he was the first superstar. Michelangelo, he's been documented and, 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 and it's there for, for history. Michelangelo was our first superstar. And before the end of this world, artists will become our superstars all over again. I feel like as time go on, it's gonna come back full circle. Okay, now, and uh, people look at artists and they think that you are only gonna draw a picture. But I notice that you have a bus beside you that you're presently working on. Explain the, that diversity in art that you have. Well, the only way I can explain is that I didn't know that I was a diversified artist. I um, was asked to do some renderings for Mayor Arrington of Birmingham for the statues that are now out in the Kelly Ingham Park um, where the civil rights um, uh, movements took place. He couldn't find an artist that could sculpt a black person and make them look black. They always look like white with nappy hair or some are, are, are sculpted in bronze with, with white features. So I said, well, let me do it. And I did it and I had never done one before. And this was in 1994. I did it and I, I ended up doing the statues and people started saying, oh, they look good. On this particular piece in, beside me here, um, this is a gentleman who's uh, made a lot of great strides in business. I won't say his name, but this is a surprise to him, but um, from Montgomery. But this is a bust of a very uh, prominent businessman in our community. And I do do research. The question you asked me three questions ago, Chief, and I didn't answer it fully, is what inspires me. And, and when I do these paintings and statues, what gets me to this point is I do research on them. All the books you've seen here, I go out and buy once I have been asked to, I've been commissioned to do a certain work of art. I have to study my subjects to become them, to become this man, his great of hair, his nose, his thin nose that goes in the big lips with the creases in him, the little goatee under there and the mustache and his piercing eyes. I had to do this and, and become this person, you know, like an actor. 
You know, you have, artists have to become whatever we're painting or else we cannot make it work. The, the viewer will not be able to feel what we're doing if we don't feel it first.